And welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's world and tech news leading towards a singularity. I'm Tristan Gray. I'm Nathan Waters. It's High 45. Woo! Winner. There's a lot of stuff this week. It's kind of cool. Yeah, very opinionated. Yeah, this is all opinion stuff this week. Yeah. Well, apart from my laser powered <laughs> helicopters. <laughs> it could be. They're pretty cool. Yeah, it's not bad. Well, Lasers are cool. They are cool. That's, that's your opinion. Hey, also, laser. Okay, well, um, uh, Facebook Bill of Rights, how we should sort of redo one. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, this one is about how with sharing everything online, at the moment you can pretty much craft whatever person you want from it. You can just pick and choose. So I thought that's a really cool idea. Yeah. Uh, an op-ed, a New York Times op-ed about Google and I guess what they're kind of moving towards. Sweet. From a high, a, a high profile science fiction writer that I've never heard of, mm. sadly. William Gibson. He's yep. pretty awesome. <laughs> And then our singularity topic is from Arthur C. Clarke, because there's a video of him actually predicting the future about 50 years in the past. Yeah, 1964. Yeah. 1964. And uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing how accurate he was and he just had a lot of ideas about how to predict the future and what would be a good idea to do it. Pretty epic. Yeah, it's kind of kind of really sweet. It's a, it's a fantastic video to watch. So we'll be talking about that and how you can actually predict the future, what, how you should do it, I guess. What you it's kind of sweet. I'm about to get my beer, so I'm like <laughs> sitting up a bit trying to find out where the damn thing is. Hurrah, and it's not frozen this time, so I'm very excited about that. <laughs> Actually, drink a bloody thing. Anyway, um... Cool, who's up? Uh, I'll start, I've got my laser heli-powered copters. Yo, lasers! Laser-powered copters, helicopters. Th- that title must have just drawn you in. Oh, it was great. It was laser-powered helicopters, <laughs> I mean, come on. Laser-powered helicopters. Laser-powered helicopters. Come on, aren't you excited? Now, the, the basic idea is there's this company called Laser Motive, which have designed a... 22 gram model helicopter mm-hmm. and it's powered by lasers. They've got like a photovoltaic cell on it attached on the side and they just use a focused laser. It's only like a few watts, so it's not powerful at all. Like, really not at all. Yeah. And uh, it can fly indefinitely with it. They've got it fl- flying for like hours with it. And uh, yeah, they can just keep it up with just like, you know, laser bursts, just controlling with the laser. It's great. <laughs> a laser is keeping things afloat. And then they, they had a contract with NASA, um, $900,000 to uh, beaming power to a robot that climbed a 900 meter cable. So, I mean, they're, they're pretty full on there. Uh, there was a cable dangling from a helicopter oh, okay. and they cli- the robot climbed the cable by being powered entirely by lasers. Yeah, because I was just about to ask, like, how the hell do they, like, maintain a laser yeah. tracking? So, it's it's attached to a cable and it goes straight up. What? No, no, well, that was how the robot did it. This is with a helicopter they did it without any tracking. It was just a helicopter flying. They've got yeah, a video. How do, you, how do you point the laser? How do you get it up? Oh, this one was just going up and down. Yes. But even with that, like they had with the robot climbing the cable, that was on a helicopter too, pretty stationary. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they said that they what they really want to start to work on now is um, UAVs, like all the autonomous vehicles and stuff, and being powered by laser. Yeah, because yeah. they can do it a lot with planes and stuff. Like helicopters at the moment, sure, if you don't have the power, then it falls and dies. But they said there was this gliding, um, they had a gliding one. I'm not sure if it was there, I'm pretty certain it was. That uh, yeah, it could actually glide around, and they'd just shine a laser at it when they needed to recharge it. I mean, just keep it's, going. <laughs> yeah, just absolutely phenomenal. We want to keep yeah. things permanently up there, make them really great. We've already got the solar-powered aircraft that can fly around the world that did that a few times. You don't need to just have it by from the sun. Have it like yeah, or you get a few lasers that repowers it. Even if it only keeps it up there for like a, a bit longer, you could do a lot of cool stuff with it. Yeah. Very excited about this. And they're concerned about Facebook privacy. Yeah, I know. We've got laser coppers. <laughs> They could be out perpetually, like 24 seven, just mm. monitoring you, just sitting over your head, tracking your GPS. Think of the terrorism you could cause with that. My God. Just drop. Yeah, just have it as a bomb. <laughs> just like, nah, bomb. You could just drop cats on people. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you wanted. Like, I mean, you really could, like, well, even just, you know, like, uh, well, I'm sure you could do it now with just a helicopter with just a gun on it, like just a basic thing. You just come in and you just shoot them and fly away. I've heard apparently you can with it. laser. Shoot them with a the laser. <laughs> I've heard apparently if you say the word bomb anywhere, like on any communication medium, yeah, bomb. Bomb. Then apparently it instantly picks it up in their filters and you're all sort of blacklisted. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, so don't say bomb. Never would say bomb. Don't say bomb. Bomb's terrible. No. Wait, killing the president. You're not allowed to say that phrase. I want to (laughs) kill the United States president. Totally illegal. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Otherwise, kids. Um, So yeah, that kind of leads on to this, um, it's just a tech crunch, I guess, sort of opinion piece um, that I found. Um... Talking about a Facebook Bill of Rights, they've, tr- they've they kind of tried it before. Like they've got their whole um, they call it at the moment principles, which I guess is their you know remember a little bit back how they had that um, I guess the the big like hoo ha that everyone was like oh fuck you because because 
Because <laughs> they were changing all their um, privacy settings and they put together like a um, a document that just that sort of put forward, you know, what we're going to share and what we're not going to share and how we're going to behave and mm. what your rights are and everything. But um, everyone's kind of saying that, I mean, Facebook has half a billion users now. They're bigger than pretty much most countries except for like China and India. S- India, yeah. So they're like the third biggest country. And and the and people have been making this point for a while, and I think we have as well, like way back when. It's like a it's, nation. It's a country, yeah, it's a nation. And it's you operate on it and you interact with all these people irregardless of race, of gender, of nation. No, no, that's not true. I do operate with people regarding gender. Like that is a pretty main When thing. you're poking people, I guess. Oh, 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 yeah, okay. <laughs> that's far too sexual to far too many people. <laughs> Sorry. No, but yeah, it's like, because, um, and this is kind of an idea going on of like where a government's going in the future, where a nation's going in the future. Yeah. Is the internet actually going to like completely take over as our, like, why do we need nations anymore when we've got the internet? Well, see, this could be the first, first yeah. um, online nation. I mean, there's yeah. got to be many, but this could actually be a good first one. And I guess, is that what he's saying? Is this, um... Oh, no, what, that's, what? That's, that's his first thing. It's like, well, it's pretty much like a country, so we should really have a Bill of Rights. Yes, yeah, we'll see that. And, what? like, a proper constitution. Yeah, Australia and... doesn't have a Bill of Rights. Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, Australia. We just had, uh, we've got, uh, Labour's in, and we've got our first female Prime Minister just got voted. And we're getting fibre optic to the home. Yes. That was the big, uh, that was big the, Yeah, we mentioned before. Actually got it. It was so close. It was literally, it was down to one dude. Yeah. One dude could have actually sent us back to the polls, but he was like, ah, oh, enough with that. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty cool. So we're, we're getting, getting fiber. a fiber, fiber optic. Like, that's yes. the main thing. That it was either mobile or fiber optic, and we're getting fiber optic, yeah. so... One gigabit fiber optic. Thank the Lord. Um, anyway, so he... This, this guy's, like, he's put his own um, bill of rights. It, it's pretty much all based around uh, privacy. It's like, you know, don't do bait and... No privacy bait and switch, so essentially... um. How Facebook is always saying, you know, names and photos and friends lists will always be private, and now they're not, and a whole bunch of other stuff. It just seems like, just re- quickly reading through them just there, that they, it's not well thought out. That I mean, like, I know Zuckerberg tried to do it by, like, having people, like, comment and say what they want on it. Yeah. They need, it needs to actually come to a point where it becomes necessary to organize a, a, a nation thing, like a Bill of Rights. That all these are privacy, all of these could probably be summarized in, like, two or so. Yeah. Like, on a Bill of Rights, the right to opt out of Facebook marketing. It's a bit like, yeah. Well, I was actually, when I was reading through this, because they, they mentioned Google quite a bit, how they've had a lot of privacy policy yeah, they issues. they simplified their stuff recently. Yeah, and I've actually had a thought. Like, Google has has been collecting so much data on us lately, like, ever since it first was created. But I think they're just smart about it. They don't let you know that they're yeah, collecting it all. Whereas Facebook is there, they're releasing so many <laughs> features. They're, like, they release a feature and they, um you know, suddenly make available this piece of data you've got. And everyone's like, oh my God, fuck yeah. off. You're sharing too much of my privacy. Like, maybe they should just keep it in the background and just keep aggregating it until and they... do a few things. And then it. slowly leak it out. So the best part is that Facebook is built around showing what cool things you can get when you share your data. Whereas yeah. Google is just, no, no, we're just a box that you type in what you want to find. <laughs> and then they just do it behind the scenes using all of your data. You know, I found out recently that how good Google Ads were for following me across the web. I was looking at updating um, WordPress yeah. with this um, thesis theme. Anyway, I went and checked out the site. I checked out a few other ones there. It must have put a cookie on my computer or something because every website, like, it must have been about nearly every second website I visited had an ad for Thesis and, like, just come down with this stupid fucking um, South Park character there with a goatee. It's like, well, that really encourages me to get this. And then it really pissed me off. Well, remember how we were talking about how uh, the like button, you put a piece of a like code on on your Facebook, on your page, Facebook instantly knows it's you and tracks you. But I don't think that's really a big thing, considering the amount of power that Google had with tracking me with that goddamn well, the, ad. The, the same thing. Every single AdSense ad is mm. a piece of or Google yeah. Analytics even. Yeah, it's like we like, every yeah. site we do, we always put Google Analytics on it, and I'm sure that tracks it, every you're user totally that right. hits it. Because it's not what we get really upset about, like in the like button sharing too much. When Google already has all this damn thing, like yeah. I swear, check out your AdSense ads. Like, just see what you're actually getting on a lot of the banners. They're the main ones that I found, and uh, see if you're getting the same ads again. Because I really, really was. It was yeah. crazy, and that really just made me think about it and go, "Wow, okay." I think very soon, I think, because uh, Google can't, they really can't afford to buy Facebook now. It's just no. too much. <laughs> they should have done it before. But I think it's going to get to the point where they'll have to partner with each other's shared data to actually do some awesome stuff. Yeah. And it's going to, happen, to you know, beat off any other competitors. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, that kind of leads into my next story, which is, I think it's, it's pretty much segway, a blog post. Segway, segway. Well, it, it does. It really does lead into it. It's, um, it's a blog post by a tweetagewasteland.com. Confessions of an internet superhero. It's pretty cool. But um, it's, it's a, great, uh, a great little article about... Um, it's called, I've Seen Your Future and It's Been Edited. It came about that he had two of his friends were on a reality TV show. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got... He knows them pretty well and he thinks they're pretty cool and stuff. But they got portrayed in a really, really bad light. Like, just in an interesting through light. Editing. Yeah, through editing. Because they were only on it for, like, a few weeks. And then what they did through that hundreds of hours of uh, recording yeah. they just selectively picked out the best bits to actually make them uh, become a character and so like okay. one of them was like a bitchy girl that didn't care about her boyfriend and the other the boyfriend was like you know an overprotective like douche who did all of this mm -hmm. and he knew that he was nothing like it and he started to think about it and look into his past and all the stuff he shared online and he realized that right now like just searching on google and facebook and twitter and anything else you've shared online you can really selectively pick what you've posted and create create any character from it. I was trying to say craft any character Pre from it. Craft, yeah. But you can, yeah, create any story behind that person if they don't already have a story. And yeah. that's that's kind of like a really big thing that say I don't know, like say searching for you, like online. There are so many like different stories you could all put don't together. Search for me. <laughs> yeah, but if you don't already have that big story behind you, if you don't already have like that idea, then you're not there. Yeah. And I, I really like, I think this is going to become more and more and more and more and more and more important as things go on that you need to actually work out who you are because people can just grab stuff online and present you as this type of person. Yeah. Well, you, you can almost do that in your latest status update. It kind of, I, I've actually seen more and more things in the news lately where someone will post some status update on either Twitter or Facebook or something hmm. and they get in shit for it because... A lot of the times they might actually be, you know, joking or being sarcastic, but the media picks that up and like, Twitter today. You're so evil. With the election, the, uh, with them getting in, one of the, I forget, one of the people said that, oh, well, screw the independence or something like that, but it was like, clearly it's a joke, then that populated all around everywhere. Yeah. It's like, and really then it suddenly nice. becomes a serious thing and it loses yeah. all its sarcasm. All its context. It's like, oh, come on, I'm just joking around. I mean, even, uh, I was actually just thinking then, um, if, like, go, say, like, 10 years in the future now, when people are looking back, like essentially like the, the histories of our, the, the archaeologists of our time 10 mm. years from now, where they're just essentially searching through data on the web to find out yeah. who you were, what kind of person you were. I mean, there's so much data, they're going to have to aggregate it all into a summary of you. Yeah, and then they just get to pick what yeah. it is. Oh, because of this tweet on the 20th of September 2007, I proclaim he's a douchebag. He's and then also possibly homosexual. And no, like you could be the, like, the kindest, most sweetest person yeah. or whatever you want to say online. And if you summarize them, I'm sure that'll ch completely change. Yeah. So that's why I think it's are. important to actually craft your own persona now. That you actually be known as that thing. Because, I mean, everyone... Like, there's few people in the world who actually have their own persona with it. But, you know, like, uh, people do. Yeah, you like can craft it. Twitter. Yeah, or even just craft the idea behind it. Say, like, you know, Kurzweil's got his idea. Like, he's got him there. Like, Stephen Hawking. Like, even William Gibson, yeah. he's got his own idea. You can't come up with, like, all this horribleness about him. Like, either Arthur C. Clarke, which is going to be our, um, our singularity topic. Yeah. It was a talk about him being, um, liking young boys and stuff. But that isn't a part of it. Even What's... if he did like young boys, it's not a part of his image. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's my okay. thing here that I think you should really own your story. Can I, can, I, can I segue on young boys? Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, this is a <laughs> New York Times uh, op-ed by William Gibson. Who is William Gibson? Well, he, he wrote Neuromancer. I, why have I not heard of this? Ne Neuromancer was like the create he, the story, the book that created cyberspace. It was all about people like really? you know, yeah, like, like in the. Well, yeah, it was all about sixties. No, no, it was like seventies or eighties or something. Okay, but well, maybe even later than that. But uh, no, it was about uh, like people going inside the computer. It was all it was cyberpunk. He pretty much came up with cyberpunk. Okay, cool. That you operated in subspace. And they were cool with trench coats and the blue eyes and stuff. <laughs> Let's forget the girl's name. <sighs> so like a cyber Aryan race. Yeah. Okay. Like, you know, in the classic movie Hackers, where Angelina Jolie, or I think it's Angelina Jolie, says, we have to hack the Gibson. Ah. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. 